Okay, so I've added another one, but this one looks really bad. Um, I don't like that orange at all. So I'm going to have to make a new, um, let's see here, a new stitch. So let's make a new stitch. Um, I'll just take my old one, duplicate it down, select these two objects here, and give them a different color. I'm just going to give them a, a gray color. Whoops. Let's uh, choose their actual color. There we go. So we'll make them gray, and I'm going to make that gray global and click OK. And I'm going to show you why we make them global. So in my brushes, I'm going to show you a shortcut way of doing this. Instead of clicking New Brush, I can also just drag these right over the brushes palette, and then choose Pattern Brush, OK. And uh, I made this 75%, I think, of the original size, just to scale it down some. OK. So now I go back in here, select this object, I've got this pattern brush selected there, and I'm going to choose this one, this new one instead. And now, let's deselect everything. I'm looking at it, and I'm not quite happy with the color that I have there. So what I can do is take my swatches palette right here. I have this. I made this a global swatch, which means if I check the preview box here, now as I drag, I can experiment with different colors find one that I like. And I just want something very faint. Okay. And also, if I expand the stroke right here, this, this is the offset stroke, there's an offset applied to it, and I can always click that offset and change the value. So I could change it to like negative 10. Did that work? Should have worked. Oh, I didn't have it selected. So gotta select the object, and then it'll work. Select the object, Select the offset, change it to negative 10, and there it updates my, uh, my stitching. And that's too much. Okay. So now let's keep plugging along, adding more stitches. Okay, I've added a couple more stitches. And um, I want to apply this stitch pattern to this object. So there's a quick and easy way to do that. Let's look at our graphic styles palette, which would be right under Window um, Graphic Styles, right there. So uh, right here we have graphic styles, and I just created that. Okay. If I double click on this object and select the object that I want to copy, I like this stitch pattern, then I will go up here to Graphic Styles and click New Graphic Style. That's going to create a graphic style that has all the same characteristics as this object. So if I now double click back out here, double click on this object and select it, all I have to do is choose this graphic style, and now the same exact stitch that was here, or that was here, is now up here too. So I can do the same thing with these others if I want to. Uh, I don't think it'll be appropriate for these though. So I'll probably have to do those more manually up here. Um, but I could, I could use it as a starting point. So I could select this, this object and go to my graphic styles. Where did I put the palette? Doggone it. Window graphic styles. There it is. And say new. Oops. Click out here. Get this object. Click our graphic style. Now that is way too much. I don't even know what's going on there. It's got doubles and stuff. But we can always fix it. So now we just bring up our appearance palette. Look pretty closely. Um, oh, I see what the deal is. If I bring this up, you'll see. It wraps around because this is an open path. So I need to close this path. So use my pen tool and close it. There we go. Now it has just the two. But I need to make them smaller, and make the offsets smaller so they'll work. So I select the object, select the stroke, change the offset. So right now it's negative 5. I'll make it negative 2. And the other one, right now it's 10. I'll make it 5. Close that up. That should get us closer. And I'll just need to adjust this a little bit.
That looks pretty close. I just got to add the others. So now I've gotten to a point where, um, honestly, I could take this a lot further in Illustrator, but I wouldn't. Um, that's an interesting thing. I mean, you know, over the years as I've used Illustrator, I've just found that there's a certain point, I mean, it's really good for this kind of thing, and then when you go to start starting trying to render things out, if it's this kind of product, like a shoe, it's a lot easier and faster to do it in Photoshop. So from this point on, I would take it over to Photoshop. Now the way that I would do that, um, I do have some tips for you. So what I would do is I would make a new document in Photoshop that's the same dimensions as this document. This document is saved on my desktop. So now I hop over to Photoshop and go fi uh, File Place and then I choose my shoe demo and it's going to ask me how I want to place it and I want to crop to, it might say bounding box by default I change that to media box that way it'll crop all the way around and it'll give us our whole sheet of paper in here and it should come in and fit just perfectly click OK now there's only one problem I'm seeing here and that is, if we look closely looks like the overlay is showing, the overlay layer is showing by default so if I go over here to my layers palette, let me pull this in here um, I can double click on this smart layer. It's brought it in as a vector smart object. So if I double click on it, it opens it in Illustrator. And see, it says the title of my document is vector smart object. So all I have to do is I can actually just get rid of that layer because I don't need to look at it. And then hit save. I don't know why it's taking forever. Close. And this is my old one, so I can actually close that too. Go back to Photoshop, and it will update and get rid of that layer. Okay, much better. Now, I want to, uh, there's one more thing I want to do before we go any further. I want to duplicate this layer and say New Smart Object. Let me get it where you can see it. Right click it, it says New Smart Object via Copy. So I'll do that. And what that's going to do is make a new smart object that I can edit independently of this one and it won't, they, you know, they're completely separate objects. So I'll call this one my line work. Double click it, pop it open in Illustrator. Now I'll just select um, all of the objects inside of this group. Darn it. There we go. So we'll select everything inside the group and set its fill to none and give it a stroke. And we'll call the stroke, um, I'm going to make it really thin and light if I can find my stroke palette over here. So I'll make it 0.5. That'll work just fine. Zoom in here and I want to get rid of all those special strokes in here. I want to get rid of all the, the brushes and stuff. So I'm just going to set their graphic styles to none as well. Now it occurs to me that I didn't actually want to save, change the fill to empty. So let me change the fills to white. So we'll just do this. There we go. So now we just have line work there. And let's verify that our lines are, in fact, stroked 0.25, as thin as it can be, really thin. Go back out here, do the same thing with this shoe. So we'll go inside, select all the objects, change them to black and white, and change them to a very thin stroke. And I can get, I can get rid of these for this layer. Save it. Close it, come back to Photoshop. Now I have a lines layer and a shoe layer.